Hi, I would like to begin with the observation of round 10 with a few very instructive games to take a look at. And first we will see a rising talent. <clears throat> Uh, Pranay Surya, who is actually playing with Black versus Shyam Sundar. This game was incredibly interesting and it shows what really the energy of chess should be like. It was beautifully played, very instructive, really, really well set. And I've got to say, it was just such an incredible example. So let's take a look and see what this is all, what this game was all about. After the moves of uh, e4, c5, knight of 3, d6, and knight of 6, black played the knight or a variation, which was uh, good, a6. And so after the move of pawn to a6, basically white did bishop to the e3, and uh, there was e5. So <clears throat> things look good at the moment. So after the move of pawn to the e5, it pushes the, uh, the the knight out of the way, and as he's basically forced to um, uh, forced to move that knight out. So after the knight b3, bishop to the e7, this has actually happened, uh, and essentially white played with f3. Now, uh, speaking of the position here, I believe white is doing his best in a way to follow the main line. He wants to do the g4, which is the most common move. Just to, then after that, of course, there will be this opportunity to launch a kingside attack and that's what he's really up to do. So after f3 there was bishop e6, the queen d2 castles and then a5. A very smart and innovative way of playing the, 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 the seriation. Basically what white wants to do, uh, what black wants to do is to advance that pawn in the a from a4 to a3 and quickly move through so that he could push the opponent back and make him like to worry. This is very important. Now, essentially what white does is to place the move of pawn to the a4, and then it was the move of knight to c6, which was quite interesting. After that move, white did king to the b1 on his own in order to get back, and, um, okay, what black played was the move of knight to the b4 here, and then after continuing with this, then it was rook c8. I have to admit, it was a pretty nice way of playing it, and basically what black wants to do is just set up as many pieces as possible around the around the queen side, and it's, it's good looking. There's also a nice challenge against the c3, and yes, for the most part, this looks good. Then white does rook to g1. I think that was a little bit of a bad move. Not only that it is slow, but the real problem of rook to the g1 it is not it does not really do anything it's one of these quiet simple moves which just doesn't seem to be uh, all that good at all in the first place i think that didn't have to be played perhaps white should have just played the move of h4 or maybe even continued with something like g5 most likely uh, that would have been probably better but um, let's see he did that move anyway and so after the move of rook to the g1, uh, it's like d5 happened. g5, knight, g8. Some people would say that this is way too brave to do this type of move. And in a way, maybe it uh, it is. But the plan with the move of pawn to the d5 is ultimately to break through and uh, actually get, get all the necessary activity and steps that we need in order to uh, like open each each of the pieces. This is what you really want to do. In a position like that, that makes a lot of sense. G5, knight, e8. Now, I do like to say that knight to e8 was not a perfect move because it felt more like a, a backward move. But uh, in any way, after knight e8, edicts to the d, bishop f5, it is kind of clear what we're getting from that. The bishop is getting a pretty powerful position on the c. He has the chance to challenge the opponent quickly out there. And it's, um, in a way, it is good to have it. Good bishop, strong control, and it looks look it looks fine. After that, White had to do rook to the c1 in his own, and then after continuing with this rook to the c1, let's see rook to c1. Then there was this move, and uh, a g f4. White made here one more mistake. Should have probably continued with h4, and possibly after that h4, there was uh, going to be the move of h5 to advance quickly on that down that side of the board. f4 was move, was a move that related to something entirely different, and it's not actually going at all towards White's plan in any way. You see, that's that's very important. Whatever the, the idea is, one must always think about advancing his plan. It's just just following ahead with moves that will help him to advance the plan. When a move like that happens, and it is pretty obvious that it doesn't advance the, the plan or the, the possibilities in any way, 
is just bad and I think that this is exactly what's coming in here uh, with that move in line <clears throat> we see that um, after f4 black can play knight d6 and while white is kind of waiting around and moving moving around with his pieces black is doing something very purposeful on his own he is really bringing his forces as quickly as they as he can on the queen side so what we could see is going to happen is that after that type of move he will just go and uh, move ahead with something like uh, actually there are plenty of moves but there is knight c4 there's going to be a nice challenge against the queen as well as the b2 pawn in general and it is good is it perfect perhaps no but it's just it's a very strong play versus white in this position <clears throat> so white had to do f takes to knight e4 and now he made another move that was bad. What White did in here was to basically make his queen go to d4, which simply allows Black to do so much. This makes very little sense, in my opinion. Why? Because it doesn't seem to help. You know, the problem of White's queen move is that um, actually he's allowing Black to stay with a pretty powerful type of um, like um, uh, pretty powerful activity we have a great looking queen and a rook and a knight so I, I guess what White have cal has calculated that there wouldn't be anything so dangerous coming out of these pieces but the prob the thing is he doesn't even need to do that the principle suggests that if black is left with those strong active pieces uh, in, in this position he'll do uh, or deliver a lot of damage against white's position so that's very powerful and um, okay let's see after continuing with the move of from <clears throat> like uh, queen to the d4 knight x to the c3 and uh, then of course white has enough to worry about because of the uh, the, t the ch challenges out there that are supposed to happen so let's see here then there was the move of uh, <clears throat> okay so after the take there was a beat x to the c and knight x d5 which was pretty awesome out there so like after continuing with the uh, knight x to the d bishop d2 there's bishop c5 which instantly shoots at the white queen and uh, you know he's got weaknesses he's got extra problems and now even the queen is going to be really targeted and pushed back uh, so that that actually forces an exchange which white just cannot avoid and that exchange is really terrible in every single way we could see that white just cannot escape but then the exchange on another hand is pretty terrible because it gives black the opportunity to open a file a file that will most likely be devastating towards towards white there will be a strong attacking a resource uh, with a move like rook to the b8 on the line and there will be so much more to come it was very bad it's hard to explain explain exactly what white was uh, thinking in this type of position but black took over the initiative which basically means that he's winning he took over the initiative he's creating uh, uh, some really fast and efficient threats against white so why did queen f2 in this position and then after continuing with this move uh, okay well let's see here then next there is c4 to happen very good looking move beautifully played and just in line with exactly what we're looking for it's perfect what happens after the move uh, that that comes here well white had to play rook to the e1 on his own he doesn't have that many options really he just has to do this but uh, then after continuing with the move uh, with, with this move then so after the move of queen to the d7 black's position is obviously winning it is a clearly better situation in which black has a total command over the b file which he can easily control by setting up his rook there white's king is in a bad game uh, white's uh, game like he has no way of actually moving out in this moment so that while there is rook to the b8 and suddenly a lot of strong moves coming against white's king I cannot say that he, he has the same quality type of position. So he played king to c1 in that moment in order to uh, move the king out out there. But then there was queen takes a4, which is perfect, and uh, we can we can understand why this is getting bad. Queen takes a, obviously the queen is coming. This was a beautiful game that will teaches us of three very critical principles now the first principle is very important it's about the speed of the attack a lot of people don't actually understand that how speed works 
And the truth is that speed is extremely important. You have to understand that whatever it is that you're doing, you have to do you have to do it as quickly as possible and with no delay. Because if you delay it, it could get bad. So it's it's very important that uh, you actually act quickly. The second very important thing that you have to remember is uh, fight for initiative. The material doesn't matter that much. What really we need to do is. Uh, Focus on attacking against the opponent, you know, pressuring, taking on the initiative, which will be very, very useful. When you do that, the rest is less significant in a more dynamic and a more tactical positions. So Black did that beautifully. And most of all, here is something to learn from the white perspective, and this is never underestimate the power of the strong and the advanced pieces because when the stronger advanced pieces are there and you know, uh, are far advanced inside one's position and dangerous they could do a lot of damage just just by sitting there they could be very scary you know and also be very very careful and uh, yeah i mean that was um, that was all i'd like to mention about this position it's it was very good game so let's take a look at some of the other interesting games that were played on um, this round so there was a game that was played as a matter of fact between uh, Gr grandmaster uh, set raman and swapnil this game started with the sicilian bishop b5 and c4 a very intriguing system the main idea of white is in case black exchanges, white will be taking away a good square of c6 and it will be taking some more control out there. And so essentially that's just a very valuable idea. After continuing with this move, <clears throat> then uh, basically black played with knight to f6 in order to step out of the way. So it looks good. And so what happens in this position is after the move of knight f6 uh, here and then there is the g6. So basically, there was d4, c x to the d, and knight x to the d. From what we can see right now is that the knight is beautifully placed in the center. The majority of white species don't have that privilege. And so while uh, black is going to be perfect looking with the control and further on with the ideas of bishop g5 and queen d2 and all, black will struggle, I mean a lot, in this position. So bishop g7, bishop e3, castles h3, and then bishop takes to c6. Some will argue that this exchange really does not give black to uh, white as much control. Well, you know, maybe it doesn't. But on another hand, what we see is that it provides white with a little more time. And time in these situations could be quite critical. So I have to say it's not such a bad idea to play. Bishop takes to the c6, b takes to the c6, <coughs> and then uh, white played with c5. A very smart combination which uh, which is mainly directed towards breaking white's pawn structure. It looks interesting. After the move of pawn up to the c5, what we get to see is that if white takes that pawn with d takes to the c, he will most likely lose it you know after knight b3 but it's the problem isn't so much that he's gonna lose the pawn the problem comes from the fact that black speeders are simply gonna come through they will move in and they will become incredibly dangerous just the way just the way they come forward and so that was a very very powerful activity in this case I have to say with that was uh, after queen to b8 what really did happen in the game <clears throat> well after the move of queen to b8 white just decided to move with knight b3 a5 and then short castles now I wouldn't say what happened in here with knight to b3 I mean after dx uh, after knight b3 was great though I do want to say that it's it's a move that just sets our pieces backward and in that regard you just don't want to be playing backward. Backward moves are often very easy for your opponent to, to handle. Just that's why it didn't work. It doesn't work. I think maybe a move like Rook C, short castles could have even sacrificed the pawn, but then actually in case of a sacrifice here, if black captures on the B2, <clears throat> we can have queen to the D3. And then eventually here, C dix to the D, or rook F D1. I think White could fight for initiative. Now, obviously, the Grandmaster fought for a whole lot longer in the game. He decided that it may be a bit too risky. That's why he chose an even more passive move. But yes, so actually, after continuing with the move of Knight to B3, Black played this here, Bishop B6. So the game looks more or less equal, I have to say. It's not like much worse and much better. It looks fine. And then after uh, Queen to C2, Bishop takes to the b3. 
and in that moment what we see is that uh, white played with um, okay so he takes born to the d5 and rook to a4 yes getting a little bit more stability on the line especially towards the e4 pawn seems um, fair enough <clears throat> if white exchange if black exchanges then black is going to uh, ultimately like recapture which is not bad and then after knight xd4 knight xd d xd rook xd4 looks all right rook a7 bishop f4 it's a rather equal position, but not drawish in any case. I like to mention that. It is just a challenging one, complex situation, in which white has a good open file and direction towards black, and black has to stay a little bit behind, at least at this particular moment. So, it is not bad or dangerous to play here. After bishop f4, queen b6, rook e1, rook d1. White now relies on a specific, very, a very useful plan. What is supposed to be the right way to plan here? There are so many good moves and things to do. So exactly what should we do? While that seems to be a complex question to answer, I'd like to say that often the intentions of a certain position should depend, basically, on what is the major goal. That's why I say that before we set up a plan, we need to ask ourselves very concretely what is the actual goal in a given position. And I, I suppose we could very easily realize that the major goal for white over here uh, is or eventually must be to find or define a way of bringing his pieces together so that when he ultimately gets to coordinate them, the coordination of the pieces is going to guarantee for future threats and important possibilities. So, uh, in that regard, what we find is that uh, after rook to the, D, the a8, rook a4, h5, rook to a1, so white is able to first set the coordination between the two rooks together. It is a good coordination. With a7, with a5 being under some pressure on the line, and uh, the majority of the black piece is just sort of tied down and a little behind, I don't think white's got anything to worry about. It just fits. It, it fits in. This position looks really good at the at the start. So what's coming out in this type of position after the move of um, <clears throat> like uh, rook d to a1? Obviously, black is a bit more behind. He's sort of tied down on the def to a defense, which is not very convenient, I have to admit. And so this gives white some extra chances. So what's what's going to happen next? Rook a1, rook a6, bishop c7. Beautifully played. A great bishop uh, attacking against the black pawn and tying, that, tying some of his most valuable pieces down on the defense. Looks great. Rook d1. See... The difference, what really makes the position very different and uh, stronger, maybe we could even say it for white, is the pieces. Black, while black is definitely very much behind out there and down in development, white has white is enjoying open files, attacking resources, and variety of different threats. So this is good. One black played with the move queen to the b7. <clears throat> white just did with uh, white played with bishop to the b6, which was good. And yes, it feels right. It's a good st stability, nice control, and we're able to even to even move forward. G3, queen e4. Queen dicks to the c6, and then after c dicks to the b, why well, just did queen to c7. It was an excellent move. Rook a to the d4, rook d8, and now white is uh, uh, white emerges victorious, not because of <clears throat> uh, you know something special, but just because, well, white has everything. He's got the rook, the queen, the pass pawn, the tremendous power that's available out there. And black hasn't got any of this, so just speaking of the position in terms of like how how it looks, it becomes clearly uh, superior for white to to play this position. I think that this game uh, is presents a very instructive example of what space and peace activity means. And even if you do feel that at a certain point you've lost the momentum, you can always get back get get it back by simply improving the coordination of your pieces. I feel like White really did a great job with the rooks and the bishop, and so in that regard, he was able to exploit some of Black's mistakes, like rook a6 that didn't work. Possibly Black should have played e5 or e6 and bishop e7. So he was able to exploit that in order to uh, get superiority between his pieces and, and just do so much better. So it was an instructive game, good examples, and just a, a couple of valuable points to learn from this game as to how you should be thinking yourself.